over time, over the last 50, 60 years, more and more people have become aware of how critical water is to the future of our entire region and certainly in San Antonio. One thing to remember is we're planning for a drought that this region hasn't seen in decades. Nobody knows when it's coming. But when it does, we're going we're gonna to need to have a plan in place to not only protect the endangered species, but to protect this region's water supply. What we've been successful in doing over the past four years is creating a habitat conservation plan, what we call an HCP. And what that plan does in very simple terms is that it protects the endangered species that, that live in the spring system and complies with federal law while at the same time recognizing the need of the region to have a reliable source of water. Right now, the region is at risk again that, that a federal judge, the state legislature, uh, will, will come in and essentially take over the operation of the aquifer. And, and I think this is an attempt on the part of the region to keep control of this valuable resource in the region as opposed to having it go to a court. If we didn't make agreements within the next few years of how to proceed with providing a document to the federal government to provide economic certainty to the region, the only other alternative was for a whole lot of groups to probably sue each other. So we just cannot agree, so we're gonna to continue to disagree. And what that was gonna in turn is provide no new water to the region, no economic stability, no protection of an endangered species. Well, some people are very dismissive of the need to protect these species because you don't see these species. They're, they're largely either subterranean or they're in the springs or in their water where you don't see them and they're very small, but they're a link to the ecological system that ties all of us together. And regardless of how you feel about that and the role they play, we are obligated under law to make sure that we do all we can to ensure their survival. If all you're going to do is just reduce pumpage, you're going to have to cut back your pumpage of the Edwards Aquifer by 85 percent. And that just shocked everybody because there's no way it being our primary source of water in this region where we're going to cut back 85 percent. That politically and practically wasn't possible. So everybody started looking for alternate solutions. And I think it was that reality that we faced that told us that you can't solve this just with pumping cuts. We had to come up with some measures to make sure that any impacts we had on the species were minimized to the maximum extent practicable, which means that you have to put together a very, very comprehensive and aggressive program for making sure that, that any residual adverse impact is minimized. There are a lot of complexities to the plan. There's a lot of moving parts, there's a lot of components to the plan, but the underlying concept is very basic, and that is do what we can to make sure that the species survive in spite of whatever our activities are, pumping, recreation, uh, agricultural use. In spite of all that, we can use the aquifer, we can share the aquifer, and the species continue to survive. They came up with really two basic approaches. The first approach has to do with flow protection. That is ensuring, one, that the springs don't go dry, and two, that species receive a certain level of flow which is determined to be necessary in order for the species to survive and to maintain the potential for recovery. I think when you look at the flow protection measures, two stand out as being as being more significant than the others. And one of those is what we call the VISPO program. VISPO is the Voluntary Irrigation Suspension Program. It is triggered by aquifer levels, and when the aquifer levels are low, the farmers will be paid not to pump. My name is Adam Yablonski. I'm a farmer and rancher in Western Medina County. The Edwards Aquifer is, is uh, the lifeblood of my farm. It's how I'm able to do what I do. The, you know, the, the soil is kind of the, the muscle and bone of my farm and the, the water is the lifeblood. Well, the VISPO program is a voluntary program. And so for those people who sign up for the program, they will be asked to not pump in specific situations and they'll be compensated for that. And what that does is it allows the other farmers in the region and the municipal and industrial pumpers and the springs to continue to function. And so it's an incentive for the irrigators to use less water because it's 
doesn't cost them as much money and you know helps their bottom line. It's important to encourage people to use less water because the more voluntary curtailments, the less impact it'll have on everyone in the long term. A second element is the uh, San Antonio Water System Aquifer Storage and Recovery Facility. Well, the ASR is essentially an underground reservoir. We currently have half of a year supply stored underground for us to use when we need to. Uh, the example I give is like your cell phone, you have a certain amount of minutes, and if you don't use those minutes, they don't roll over until the next month. Well, that's what our permit does. If you don't use your entire permit of getting water out of the Edwards, you start back at zero the following year. So in order for us to not lose that right, lose that water, we pump it out of the Edwards and we transport it by pipeline all the way to Southern Bear County, inject it back into another aquifer, a different aquifer underground for storage there. And we store it there, draw it back out when we need it, such as a drought situation. So it's essentially just a savings account where you put money in and when you find you need money, you take it out. And so we withdraw from it depending on the weather, depending on drought restrictions. The basic element of this HCP is conserving, protecting the habitats of, of, of these species. And those habitats exist in two spring systems, the San Marcos and the Comal Springs. They're the only known habitats for, for these species. And so because of that, they warrant protection under the laws. In the 1950s, the Comal system quit flowing. It didn't go completely dry, you still had some pockets of water out here in the lake, but it quit flowing over the dams for about six months. And that really caused, it, it caused the extirpation of the fountain darter, there were no fountain darters left after that. Well, under the HCP, the spring flow protection measures won't let that happen again. One of the HCP measures is a restoration and protection area in the Comal system. So by restoring habitat in the old channel, and protecting that habitat for those big swings in water quality. We're hoping that we'll have an area that even during those low flows will be protective of the fountain darter during those conditions. The wild rice is an endangered plant and it's one of several endangered species in the San Marcos River. Endangered animals and plants just let us know that we are reaching a tipping point where a resource might not be there for the future for all of us for various reasons. So when an endangered species is in trouble, like wild rice, that means the river and the springs and the aquifer are in trouble. It's just an indicator. The HCP is the solution that all of us sought for decades to keeping this river flowing. Without the cooperative understanding and agreement by all the stakeholders in the HCP and in the RIP, there would not be the ability for this spring to flow during drought periods. It's very important we get rolling on it as quickly as possible. Uh, as far as the habitat here in San Marcos along the river, We'll be doing restoration, mitigation, and habitat uh, activities which will help restore this area to a more natural condition and we will in fact have areas that we restrict to human access during those low flow conditions where we have very dense stands of wild rice to help protect it. So it's almost like we're gardening and weeding and uh, planting and caring for the wild rice so that during good times when we can do that kind of work, we're improving the habitat and making it easier for the wild rice to survive those terrible droughts. I personally feel incredibly lucky to have inherited this natural heritage of Texas that I get to enjoy. And there's something really quite magical about a river just springing from the ground and suddenly you have a flowing river. It's, it's at risk if we don't manage our resources carefully. If we don't manage the water in the Edwards Aquifer carefully, we put that heritage at risk and future generations of Texans then won't get to enjoy uh, this natural beauty that I've gotten to enjoy. The Habitat Conservation Plan 
has an initial period of 15 years. But these endangered species hopefully will be here as long as we are. But hopefully this resolution that we have will continue to be one that operates well, protects the species, and protects the local economy. There's a whole lot of water in the ground. Nobody argues that. But if the owner of a piece of property just pumps with no concern for his neighbor or for the environment or for the common good, you can envision the water just being sucked up and, 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 and used. The implementation of the HCP is important because it's a program that we can take to the federal government and say, look, we can do it as a community, we can do it as a region, we don't need you dictating to us what we need to do to preserve our resource, to take care of everything from the species to the human species and our needs. We're certainly interested in protecting the species, and that's what we were told to do by the legislature. That's what we're required to do by the Endangered Species Act. But I think that in so doing, the people are going to benefit. The people are going to have the, the ability to understand what are the limitations on the use of the aquifer, uh, and they're gonna be able to then plan properly, and they're gonna be able to provide the kind of economic growth that the region needs. What the HCP does really is, is take a balanced view to all the competing interests that have a stake in the aquifer, from the agricultural users to the urban users to the spring community, even to the downstream users who receive water from the aquifer. We've all come together and we've settled on the solution, this HCP, and in the end, we're all gonna benefit because we're all gonna have the certainty we were all looking for in the first place. Certainty is brought with an HCP. Certainty provides the people who live in the San Antonio region, that live out west or downstream. It provides certainty to the people in the Edwards Aquifer area that we have a plan in place to make sure that we have taken care of the endangered species issue and also that provides certainty to the communities in the region that residential and commercial businesses can continue to exist. It's certainty, that's what it's about.